In more recent years, the world's two richest men appear to have grown bored of competing on Earth and have taken their rivalry to the cosmos. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are two men who are, at this point, inextricably linked. Whether they are competing for the top spot on a Forbes list or their companies are vying to be the most profitable, people just can't get enough of this battle of the billionaires. Today, we zoom in on this new battle as we highlight and compare Musk's SpaceX to Bezos's Blue Origin. So sit Sit back, relax and enjoy. For a long time, space and space travel was solely within reach for the world's superpower nations and their governments. Agencies like the American National Aeronautics and Space Administration (NASA) and the Soviet space program, now called Roscosmos, were the main players during the great space race of the 20th century and they hit tremendous milestones like sending the first humans to space, humans to the moon and probes to neighbouring countries. Unfortunately, space missions and equipment are pretty expensive. Add to that that, the cost of running the nation, fighting wars and other things governments spend money on. The US government in particular has long faced public criticism for the amounts of money afforded to NASA, while other issues like homelessness, war veterans, crime and poverty are still running rife. One of the main reasons NASA hasn't sent astronauts to the moon since the 1970s is because it is so expensive. Apollo 11, the mission that took Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon, cost about $355 million US dollars. That's about $3 billion in today's money. The Space Shuttle program, which was instrumental in building the International Space Station ISS, was also bleeding cash. The shuttles were expensive to build, fuel, launch and refurbish. Though initially meant to be reusable, they actually had to be refurbished before relaunch. Eventually, the $196 billion program was canned in 2011. NASA has been accused of everything from financial negligence to outright corruption and misappropriation of funds. A common criticism is that as a publicly funded entity, NASA is not incentivized to look for value for money when building, sourcing materials and hiring staff. In response, NASA started outsourcing flights for their astronauts by paying countries like Russia for seats on their rockets. This made sense because Russia and the US are partners in the ISS, but the drawback was that Russia charged around $90 million per seat. At the same time, NASA decided to turn to the private sector for solutions. The general idea was for NASA to provide competitive funding to companies that had feasible plans and capacity to go to space, be it cargo missions to the ISS or crewed missions to the moon. The chosen companies would then use this funding to develop and test vehicles, equipment and software that could be used for NASA missions. NASA chiefs hoped these private companies would find more cost-effective ways of doing things. Eventually, the agency devised programs like the Commercial Orbital Transportation Service, Services, COTS, Commercial Resupply Services, CRS, Commercial Crew Development, CCDEV, and Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLPS. So far, these programs have seen NASA collaborate with private companies like Axiom, United Launch Alliance, ULA, Blue Origin, and SpaceX. According to the agency, working with these companies has been four to ten times cheaper than doing everything in-house. Founded in 2002 by then PayPal co-founder Elon Musk, SpaceX has had a fairly simple aim – to build reusable rockets that could eventually take humans to new worlds. For over 20 years, Musk has been almost obsessive about sending humans to Mars and starting colonies. The driving force behind this determination is his concern for the future of our current world. Climate change, asteroids, nuclear war and even alien invasion are just some of the potentially existential threats that South African-born billionaire is worried about. Moving to other planets is his proposed solution, and that is the ethos that drives SpaceX. The company can best be described as unprecedented. SpaceX's innovation, aggressive approach to launch frequency, and outspoken leader have made it the biggest private space company in the world by some distance. As of June 2024, the company is valued at over $200 billion, and that looks set to increase significantly. It's fair to say they have come a long way since the days when Musk was trying to buy old Soviet missiles to build his rockets. Today, SpaceX provides rocket and launch services to NASA and sends satellites into orbit to facilitate Starlink satellite internet. However, its biggest project is the Starship, a spacecraft that is being developed to take humans back to the moon and possibly to Mars. After blowing up its earliest prototypes and flirting with bankruptcy, SpaceX finally caught a break in 2006 when it earned a NASA contract through the COTS program. The company had to build a new rocket and demonstrate that it could take cargo and possibly crew 
to the ISS. In 2010, SpaceX's Dragon 1 and Falcon 9 launch vehicles did just that, as Musk & Co became the first private company to launch, orbit and recover a spacecraft. SpaceX has been taking cargo to the ISS since 2012, and since 2020, it has been taking crews there too under the CCDEV program. SpaceX offers NASA a much sweeter deal to ferry astronauts, around $55 million per seat. The Starship rocket is the next big thing for SpaceX, and testing is going well so far. In June, the Starship's Super Heavy Booster rocket completed a world-first vertical landing in the Gulf of Mexico. Several more test flights are scheduled for 2024, with Musk having promised at least nine total flights. If all goes to plan, the Starship will play a central role in NASA's crewed Artemis missions, starting from Artemis 3, which is planned for late 2026. The Artemis program will undoubtedly indicate whether Starship is ready to take us to Mars. Test flights are important and fun to watch, but the most crucial thing is how the spacecraft performs in live situations. SpaceX is also famed for its cost-effectiveness. Musk and his staff routinely break projects down to their individual parts to see what can be bought for a lower price and what can be built in-house. The result has been incredibly low development costs and a general eye-opening for other players in the industry. Blue Origin is actually older than SpaceX, believe it or not. Amazon mega-billionaire Jeff Bezos founded the company way back in 2000. Unlike SpaceX, which is determined to launch something into space on an almost daily basis, Blue Origin has a much more measured approach. Spokespeople for the company have even described it as a tortoise in the new private space race, suggesting that rivals like SpaceX are hares that seem to be in the lead. Blue Origin's first ever passenger flight into space was in 2021. To his credit, Bezos himself demonstrated his faith in this slow but sure approach by being on the flight too. As of June 2024, Blue Origin has sent vehicles to space 37 times. In contrast, SpaceX has 98 launches in 2023 alone. For Bezos though, Blue Origin is not just a way to ferry tourists to space, but a potential solution to environmental problems. His vision is to one day have people and industries working in space to reduce the negative impact on our home planet. The basic idea is to create massive space stations with optimal Earth-like environments inside. Bezos and company hope to have enough of these structures to support a trillion people at a time. Blue Origin's first vehicle was the Goddard rocket, which performed three low-altitude test flights in 2006 and 2007. In 2011, the new Shepard was unveiled and marketed as the first step to affordable space tourism. In 2015, the rocket completed the world's first booster landing. In 2021, it broke another record by performing the first automated space flight with civilian passengers. Currently, Blue Origin is wrapping up the development of its new Glenn Heavy Lift launch vehicle, which is expected to carry NASA's Escapade spacecraft to Mars later this year. The two-stage rocket has been in development since 2013, so the world has been waiting with bated breath for some time. The company also has a lunar lander called Blue Moon. The lander will be sent to the moon in 2025 as part of NASA's CLPS program. Blue Origin is also involved in space projects beyond vehicles. There is the Blue Ring, a spacecraft platform designed to support different types of space missions. It is essentially a hub that different satellites can dock onto, refuel from, or be transported by. Blue Origin is also working on the Blue Alchemist project, which involves making solar panels out of lunar dust. Pretty useful if we're going to be living on the moon for extended periods. That said, Blue Origin has a very long way to go to meet its own lofty goals. It's unlikely Blue Origin will ever match the cadence and speed of SpaceX, but the company seems wholly focused on the destination, not speed. After all, slow and steady has been known to win races. That brings us to the end of today's video. Let us know who you're backing in the space race, Musk, or Bezos. Also, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really helps the channel grow. Hit that subscribe button and keep it locked onto your favorite space channel. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.